Well, good morning. Tomorrow, we're going to have a host of swearing-ins in Sacramento, bringing in a whole new government. And one of the key players in that is Eleni Kunalakis. Not exactly a household name, but I think if you saw her ads, Eleni is the candidate and now the elected Lieutenant Governor, you're taking Gavin Newsom's place. That's right. That's okay. right. Good morning, Phil. Thanks so much for having me. Well, let's take a look at this. In your, you started out. You're born and raised in Sacramento. Right. Your father's a developer. You went on to become ambassador to Hungary. Correct. And you've been a player in the Democratic Party for years. Why run for lieutenant governor? Well, a piece of the story um, that I think I should add to that is that I'm a, from a family of immigrants. And my father came over um, as a young man, worked in the fields of California as a farm worker. And I grew up with this robust community of immigrants who were all fighting to achieve the American dream. So I know what it's like out there for people. And I ran for office because I believe that the California dream, the American dream, is truly being compromised. It's harder for people to work hard and get ahead the way my family did. And I want to try to help keep that pathway open for other people. Now, you're going to be stepping in for Gavin Newsom, who used that job as a platform. I mean, prior to Gavin Newsom, Lieutenant Governor was just the other person in the room. He'd used that as a platform. Are you planning to do the same? And if for what? Well, it is an interesting job. You know, we have a lieutenant governor primarily because if the governor leaves the state, you have to have someone there um, to hold the reins. But the fact is the job has been used in a lot of different ways. Leo McCarthy had a whole legislative agenda uh, when he had the job. And as you mentioned, uh, Governor Newsom, Governor-elect Newsom, um, has really used it as a platform to advance a couple of high-profile initiatives, including gun control and cannabis. So. So um, I do intend to do the same. I think the issues that I'll focus on, though, are more directly related to the job itself, which is public higher education and environmental issues. Okay. In what way does the lieutenant governor influence that? Starting day one, I will be the chair of the State Lands Commission. So this is really important. We control about four million acres of land in the state of California, including the land three miles off of our coast. One of the things coming at us from the Trump administration is offshore drilling. So I'm going to be at the forefront to make sure that his plans to try to open up our coast to expand it offshore drilling are foiled. And then secondly is public higher education, because the LG sits on not just one, but two of the boards of public higher education in the state, the California State University System and the uh, as a member of the Board of Regents. If you can stick around, I'd like to do another segment on uh, the UC and uh, sure. CSU, because there's a been, been a big tug of war about, you know, the tuition increases and such. Mm -hmm. But before we get out of this first one, in running for lieutenant governor, I've got to ask you, are you going to be the next Gary, Gary Davis or Gavin Newsom? Are you going to be running for governor? Look, I ran for office because I hope to go work in another administration, in a Hillary Clinton administration. And like so many women across the country, um, decided to stand up and run for office. I'm taking my first steps into elected office. And I'm very excited about doing this job. Well, she's got that line down. That's what we call in the business a non-denial <laughs> denial, which is not saying yes and not saying no. But stick around, and we're going to get more definitive on CSU and UC, because that's where a lot of uh, the issues are for the lieutenant governor. All right, thank you again. Well, welcome back. And joining us is Alini Kunalakis, not exactly a household name yet, but she is our lieutenant governor-elect. And one of the key jobs that the lieutenant governor has is sitting on the Board of Regents and on the Board of Trustees for the University of California and California State University. That's right. And that is really one of the hot button issues going on in the state right now, making colleges affordable. How do you see that going ahead? Well, first of all, when I was uh, in the middle of this campaign, I went and visited all 58 counties of California. And what I found is that public higher education is critically important to our families for their economic development, mm -hmm. um, for their plans and dreams for their children's future. And it's gotten very, very expensive. I went to UC Berkeley for graduate school. I paid $2,000 a year for that education. It is $62,000 a year for that same program. It's really 
really just gotten out of control. So how do you how do you scale that back? I mean, that's been the tug of war. Even Governor Jerry Brown was saying we need to cut back on these. There's no reason why these these, these college expenses have skyrocketed just disproportionately. But you have this huge bureaucracy at both CSU and UC. Well, look, there are a lot of reasons for the escalating costs, but the reason why so much more of it is borne on the students through tuition is because the state cut uh -huh. back dramatically on how much it was willing to pay. And that, I think, is a, a problem because the state should be investing in public higher education and not putting it all on the backs of our kids. What do you think of the idea of either tuition cuts or free tuition for Cal State universities, uh, at least for maybe in the first two years or something like that? Well, I think that we're starting with free tuition for community colleges. Right now, San Francisco, of course, is free. Across the state, the first year is free. We do need to look at bringing down the cost of CSU and UC. We also need to be looking at how we expand capacity, because right now we have too many students who are ready and prepared at, to go and enter into these programs, and there's not enough room for them. Well, that brings us another issue, which is rather sensitive with, with the, the, the public out there, is what is the role of these universities? Are they to educate Californians or are they to subsidize the education of Californians by bringing in people from outside the state and outside the country? They're becoming more and more international universities and less state universities. That's right. And I think that there's a place for international students and a place for out of state students. But what we're seeing is too many California students turning away. So there are a couple things we can do about it. One is help students get through the programs more quickly. Only about 25 percent of CSU students are able to graduate in four years. If we can move the students through more quickly, you add capacity just by virtue of that. But we also have to look at other public investment in these schools to add capacity, which is why I very much support the idea that we look at bond financing in order to be able to expand uh, the, the footprint and the capacity of these schools, but also even looking um, in a visionary way, the way that Pat Brown, Governor Brown's father, did in adding the number of campuses we have in the state. Well, that would be interesting. That would be. Got any, any locations in mind? There are a couple of communities that are already have been advocating, saying, look, our communities want one. What can we do? All right. Well, give me two names. What two cities? Well, down um, outside of San Diego, and then of course Stockton has been angling for a CSU, and uh, and um, down in San Jose they're talking about um, looking at a UC campus there. UC San Jose might be a mm -hmm. legacy. I want to thank you for joining us this morning, uh, Eleni Kunalakis, new lieutenant governor coming in. What time's your swearing in tomorrow? Two o'clock. There we go. <laughs> there mm -hmm. we go. All right.